Welcome to the SAG After Foundation's The Business. My name is Michael Slotik. I'm a filmmaker as well as the New York consultant for SAG Indy. Uh, the SAG After Foundation has a COVID 19 relief fund to support SAG After artists with basic needs like rent, food, and healthcare costs during the global pandemic and industry shutdown. Donations are 100% tax deductible and directly support performers in dire need. Information on how you can support this effort can be found in the description of this video. My pleasure to introduce the director, writer, and star of Shithouse, Cooper Wraith. Uh, that's, a, that's a fun title to say. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we're in like James Lipton land, like what's your favorite curse word or something. Right. Um, so, what, uh, so let's start with the title. Where'd the title come from? Uh, I, the main character, Alex, had a great 18 years of life with a huge safety net and he got to college and it was just a, a felt like a shitty house and so um and then there's a frat house that he meets the his love the love interest maggie at and it's called shit house and like the opening scene is about are there any parties tonight and the roommate's like yes yeah, shit house is having a party and then the character's like are any other houses having anything <laughs> So did you did you go to a school that actually had a house called shit house or you just I, made it up? No, I did. My my freshman year, I literally had that conversation where I found out that there was a house, a party house called shit house, and I was like, "This is a perfect metaphor <laughs> for how I'm feeling." It's hysterical. So it was real. Yes. Um, and it was like, uh, oh, I want to ask more. I don't want to know any more about shit house. Let's leave it there. Uh, <laughs> the real shit house, in other words. Um, yeah. So uh, where did the concept come from? Where'd you where'd you come up with this? Um, my sophomore year of my sophomore year of college, I made a movie over spring break just because I really wanted to make something. Like I had been writing some things and wanted to get that read, but I thought I needed to go ahead and make something. Um, and about a month before spring break, I didn't have I didn't know what I what I wanted to make a movie about. But we were on a college campus, so I thought call it making a movie about college will be the easiest thing. Um, so then it kind of just really quickly became about the pain of leaving home and growing up and uh this also is based on this relationship that I had with this girl named Madeline who I dated for three years and we're not together anymore but we're still best friends and that the movie's uh a lot about our relationship mm -hmm. okay so um let's talk about the development process like when like how did you jump into it and and uh kind of put together a team and, and financing and all that stuff? Where, where did it all begin? I So that first movie that I made over spring break, my sophomore year of college, it was just with two people. It, like I was booming in scenes that I was acting in and, um, and I had like eight dead pixels. But we put that on YouTube and then I tweeted the YouTube link to Jay Duplass of the Duplass brothers and said, but you won't click on this link and then email me after. And <laughs> he emailed me and said his wife and I, his wife and him watched it and they liked it and we got lunch. We didn't talk, we didn't talk right away about, Oh, we want to make this movie into a bigger movie, but we kind of just became friends. And over the course of the next like three months, he kind of brought up the idea of what if we turned this movie that you made with three people into a movie that made by professional people and, uh, and like a, a bit longer. Mm -hmm. And cause the movie was, I've been saying it's a short film, but it was like 55 minutes long. And oh. uh, yeah, it was like a, it was close. It was very already close to a feature, um, but I had written it in a short amount of time. So when we started talking about developing that into Shit House, um, I was it was nice to go back and actually spend a lot of time working on the script. And so then, really over the course of the next year, uh, we didn't have any money. It's like it. it it was really easy to fund with Jay's name um, because he was kind of everybody who worked on the movie, funded the movie, acted in the movie. We all got, cause I sent an email that had Jay Duplass's name in it 15 times. And so, but that was just super, super helpful in every way. And then um, we were eventually were on set day one of shooting. Wow. That's great. So what happened to the 55 minute version? Where, where is that? I gave it to IFC, so I, I kind of wanted to go on like a DVD if, if DVDs are a thing anymore, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I would love for people to see it because I think it's cool to see how it's grown. Interesting. And, what, and had you done, had you made many films before that? No, I hadn't made a single film before that. And I never, 
I've never thought of myself as a director. I've always, I always started like I wanted to be an actor. And then my senior year of high school, I wrote this play that I acted in. And so that's when I first got into writing. And then my freshman year and sophomore year of college, I was writing a lot. And um, then I just kind of made the decision of, oh, I just need to go ahead and make something and kind of fell into the role of director because no one wanted to direct my love story. <laughs> So now, do you has that changed? Do you think of yourself still more as an actor than a director, or director than actor, or both? Or I think of myself now as more of a director because I just fell in love, realized that directing is what combines both, like both of my loves, like writing and acting. It's just like what I'm good at. I think is paying attention to arcs and the way like it, it unfolds in the long run. Um, like a story and these characters and the themes that come from these characters, like that is like a director's job. And so, yeah, I, I love directing and I do consider myself a director now. It's just, it's hard to be the, the kid who's like, I want to be a director. Cause like, what does that mean? Because like, I want to tell people what to do. Like I don't, it's, right. yeah. It's better than telling people you want to be a producer. Cause then they just say, well, what is a producer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, most people that don't know are very confused by what a producer does. So what, um, now how, talk about a bit about, uh, well, actually talk about a bit about the casting. So how did you, how did you cast this film? So Amy Landecker who played my mom was a phone call. So Jay was in Transparent, a TV show with Amy. They played siblings. And that was a phone call where I, so I, I asked Jay, I was like, can you, I love Amy. She's mom can you call her and ask for a favor basically? And he did that. And she read the script and was like, yes, I'll come in for a couple of days. And we, we made sure to film right by our house. <laughs> and like, it, so we just, we were super lucky uh, with her, but then for everybody else, we also got super lucky. Like Dylan who plays Maggie, I reached out with another person that I know who knew Dylan on Instagram and we kind of started talking, she read the script and that's so that just was totally Instagram. But granted, I'm saying Jay Duplass name 15 times in the Instagram message. And then when we got Dylan on board to play Maggie, we still hadn't cast Sam. And so I kind of just looked through all the people that Dylan follows and the actors that like follow her back to. And Logan was on that list. I'm obsessed with Logan and he's the funniest person ever and like totally the embodiment of shithouse and I uh we reached out to him on Instagram together the same way that me and the other person reached out to Dylan yeah Logan seemed to to kind of like really represent like yeah. it's almost like he grew up in the shithouse like yes we all know that guy we know, we all know that guy. yeah <laughs> or some he of was, us weren't that guy, I guess. he was literally born in shithouse yeah <laughs> <laughs> shithouse mascot um <laughs> And how about directing yourself? What, how, did, how did you feel like with that? It was really, really hard. I really, I, I loved it at times because I, there was an immediacy that I kept, I was so aware of that I loved. Um, and I also knew, I also just always wanted to act in it. I wanted, I knew that if most actors this age who are good and successful, like probably didn't go to college, like Dylan didn't go to college, Logan didn't go to college. And I wanted someone in there to be like I they did have that experience hmm. um and but yeah directing it's just so it feels inauthentic at times because you're in a scene and then um it feels so real and it feels like the magic and then you're like okay cut let's do it again but this time let's do it like it's it just feels um, I'm sure it was just very awkward and weird for Dylan at times because um <laughs> And that's the other thing is it just it requires so much patience from the rest of the crew. It's harder on it's the, it's hard, hardest on them because they want their director to not be worried about how they're going to be present in a scene. Right. Um, yeah. so, There's such different muscles. Yeah. With. Yeah. I, I, I really I don't know if that's like I felt like they were similar muscles. It was almost like I thought of acting as directing sometimes. Like I thought of because um, the director for what I think the, the best directors and what I want to do as a director is um, not tell them exactly what to do, but just put it in a space where uh, we have like a solid base, but 
it's just playing around and being kind to people like characters that you're just in love with and i always thought about how that's alex like the main character like who i was playing is that's a similar vibe that he has like he's constantly in that position so it just worked out really well i think for me for everybody else i think they were so annoyed that i had to do the scene and then go watch it from on the monitor and say all right we need to do it again and then do it back so it, it was challenging so were you were you open to to you know your dp or yes. anybody else giving you like notes or telling you to do something differently or yeah i was everyone knew they could say whatever they wanted to say especially uh -huh. the main person was the dp rachel klein shouldered way more than a normal dp shoulders and she uh knew and, and I, there were a lot of times where because we were so pressed for time uh i would think okay we got it and i'd look to her and say yeah, we got it right and she's like yeah we got it we can move so we, should, we had a very close um relationship on set interesting that's great and then, so how close did you guys hew to the script or was it sort of more fly by the seat of your pants in terms of, of dialogue well, it was both. We didn't do have any time to improvise, so there's no uh, improv. There was never a time where I was like, "Let's just say, let's just do what we," because we had to move. But um, I always like what I was just saying before. That solid base. I like spend so much time with the script, writing the likes and the ums. Not because I care where you say the likes and ums, but just because I want to tell the actor this is harder for your character to get out um, mm -hmm. and communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really. I'm super specific with the script, but then when we get on set, I always tell them to feel free to rewrite while they're saying stuff. Like in the scene, I never want them to speak if it feels false. I never want them to say something that uh, they don't, that doesn't sound exactly right. So I think there was a lot of, yeah, that the improv feel was there for sure. There was no improv and I don't think uh, many lines were changed, but um I, they always knew they could. And I think we always, there was always a sense of we don't know exactly where this is going to go or how this is going to play out. That's great. Cause you do get the, the I, there you, could, you get the sense sometimes that it feels so natural at times that I wondered if you guys were just sort of riffing a little bit and how much you were pushing your actors in certain direction, playing director and actor. In that's, the a, that's the other thing is I knew the script so well as an actor yeah. that there were times where I would say something different and they would react differently or I wouldn't say something for a long time. And they're like, well, what's going on? And I think that, uh, yeah, I, I was, th I, that was a thing for sure. Yeah. I like how uh, you guys shot the sex scene very sort of off camera in many ways. Um, how was that again, as director and actor, I mean, it's, it can be a sensitive yeah, it was very, it, that I really had to just say, I, that scene in particular, Rachel was in charge and mm -hmm. I wanted Rachel to film it how she wanted to film it. We like, everyone left. We only had our boom guy and Rachel and me and Dylan. And um, I don't know, it was just, I think Ra Dylan and I and Rachel and I, all three of us had a really good relationship and the boom guy, Will Harold. He like, we uh, <laughs> were all very, very close and comfortable with each other. And um, we rehearsed it so, uh, the rehearsal was so detailed and not like, so uh me mechanic like uh it i think it was i mean i can't speak for it, but i think it was just a super comfortable um vibe and um rachel and as in terms of how it was filmed too i think what i love about that scene so much is the way that rachel um what she wants to see as a cinematographer is um so kind and gentle and um yeah, I just, Rachel Klein is amazing. Mm -hmm. And the, I mean, it felt very much like a, I, I had the thought while watching it, especially during um, the section where she, where you go to the, to the, is it the basketball party and she's sort of ignoring you? Yeah. In that moment where you're like, we've been, I, I know exactly what this moment is. I've been yeah. this moment. Yeah. They're confusing like what it, and I was thinking about how, how so much of the film seems like sort of like a, like a 20 something like mating dance in a way, right? This sort of game that happens and this thing. Yeah. I, I was wondering, um, you know, with that, with that sort of, sort of subtle, sort of realistic way that you were playing with it, how you decided to kind of fool around with like the stuffed dog and the, the basketball, you know, shooting hoops with, with dad, I assume. Yeah. 
that was dad. Yeah. Like these little moments of like magical, sort of magical, I don't know if it's magical realism, but magical moments that are not realistic. So I'm curious how you, how you came up with, did those always exist or did you kind of play with those later on? Um, those, well, first of all, what you said about the mating uh, dance, I, that was in the, so in the script I wrote, I, there was this phenomenon, like college parties for me, uh, I really love to dance. Like I love to dance. So I uh, would dance at college parties and I, I wasn't as uh, paralyzed and closed off and shy as Alex is, but I know there's this thing where at college parties, they're just like these mating dances. Like they, and I wrote in the script, like, this is just, who are we going to hook up with? Who are we making eye contact with? And so I wanted to, for the first party, he's going in and the girl is like, he, he he's learning that for the first time in that scene. And then later on, he kind of does, he's like doing it. And, uh, but that was interesting that you said that, but the, to answer your question about like the dad, the ghost dad and the stuffed wolf, those were like big risks that I spent so much time trying to calculate just, I, I re like I, I didn't just throw them in there. I think when people read uh, like the script and saw that, they're like, Oh, I don't know if you got to think about this a little bit more. I don't know if it's going to work, but I was just like, I thought I've thought about it so much that I think because the movie is going to feel so grounded, those moments um, I think will like be so poignant, especially if I don't like dwell on them too much. And, mm -hmm. but like for the stuffed wolf, I think a huge part of that relationship in those the di or dialogue scenes are I thought of the stuffed wolf as the dad and I always mm -hmm. wanted him to be talking like a middle-aged man and a lot of people were like oh you have a great opportunity here, here to have the stuffed wolf talk in a certain funny way and like really give him like a some sort of character dialogue-y like uh, shtick but I think the reason why it works and doesn't feel like so like twee is uh, because it's a middle-aged man talking and like it's because it's Alex self-parenting and using what he's uh, been taught by his parents and um, like I before the stuffed wolf there was this like memento thing that Alex carried around that was like his dad thing but then when I turned it into a stuffed wolf it became this character that not only was such a great storytelling device because that's a huge part of that that character but also just really getting inside the head and uh, the way that he was raised because uh, mm -hmm. the, and then he stops like that stuffed wolf does stop talking like halfway mm -hmm. through and it's because he's learning who he is outside of the way that he was raised. Yeah. And it's this touch of childhood, obviously. Yes. Yeah. We're all <laughs> kids. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just the, that sort of, that's the age you're talking about, you know, that yes. letting go of childhood and being not getting those hugs every night before you yeah. got them. <laughs> I don't live there anymore. Yeah. Um, so what, um, I was curious about the music. Where did, where did you come up with, with who you found for it and such? So there, the original music is by Jack Krause, this guy that I uh, was best friends with in high school. And um, so he did like the guitar stuff. And then there's three songs, one by Alex G, one by Wax Hatchie, one by Girl Pool. And they're just literally my three favorite songs from college. Mm -hmm. And I just trusted that they would fit. And I trusted that they would say yes to the insane amount of money that I was offering them. And <laughs> I daily low amount. I am and, so, yeah. Yes, yeah. Like right. they were so confused by my emails, but I sent so many of them that I think I, eventually they were just annoyed and like, we had to get this guy off our back. And um, they said yes, eventually. But I also edited the movie to those Mm -hmm. songs which was so crazy because i got all my first picks like there was never a time where i had to edit it to this song and then couldn't get the rights so i had to plug in a new song i the first cut had all of the same songs so you, you didn't but you didn't know any of these guys in terms of the band no, no. i knew great. i mean i knew uh jack obviously and then yeah. there's the last song that plays is by nick doss who also went to my high school Mm -hmm. But the Alex G, mm -hmm. I didn't, I don't know them. I still don't know them at all. <laughs> <laughs> you still don't know them, right? Is, um, so how much did it, did, if any, did it change from final script to through production, through edit? I was a first time writer who wrote way too much. And mm -hmm. I, we filmed a lot. And the first cut 
like the first assembly was so long and it made me so sad because I knew I was going to have to have a lot of phone calls where I said I you're not in the movie anymore like we filmed like there were like Maggie's mom was a character a big character in the movie and we just had to totally cut it because it just didn't work and um, I wish I could go back and do another draft of the script because I just didn't realize how not slow but how uh the script I, I wrote it so it's so compact um, but there's so much breathing that happens in the movie and it takes so long and uh, so even though the script wasn't that many pages it just the way that the scenes play out uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's a long movie and each page is long minutes wise <laughs> so that's the biggest change was just I had to cut a lot of stuff that I uh-huh. had, had written and uh, filmed so you filmed a lot of scenes that, that did not make it in in the long. Yeah. Okay. And um, what? Speaking of, of, so talk about the 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 sort of epilogue. Was was that something that was always a thought of yours that you would jump ahead a bunch of years at the end, or was that something that came about later on? Or I think um, it. No, the first. I mean, not it wasn't in the first movie or that we filmed over spring break, but I think. Uh, yeah, it was pretty early on. Like, I think the rough draft had that epilogue. I always thought of I the phone call with Alex and his mom where Alex says, I, I at least want to try. I always wanted Maggie to have her moment of I at least want to try. And so that I wanted to get to, because uh, I wanted to complete her arc. Like, I wanted um, her to have the scene where, because, I mean, they're not ending up together. They're like, it's going to say, they're going to date, which might last two weeks. But and they're walking into the dark at the end. Like I was trying to say, I don't know, but, but that's the point of the movie is them taking the the chance and saying, and Maggie's saying, I at least want to give this a go because they do love each other and maybe they won't work out because they're so uh, not compatible. But um, I think they love each other and did fall in love with each other a little bit that night and do need to explore it in some way. But I also knew that Maggie was never going to do her. At, I at least want to try for at least two and a half years. And I also, the other thing is there's this phenomenon where a couple of my friends who just graduated college are like dating seniors at college because you're leaving. I'm always interested in what people cling to, not how people change. So like there's, I wanted it to the two and a half years I really like because she's graduating. She's literally like about to go into the unknown summer of after graduation. And even Maggie who has it all figured out on the surface is like, I do want that safety net. I think I do want that safety net. And Alex is, I, the one thing I did always think about was I kind of wanted Alex to say, uh, when she asks, I wanted Alex to be like, I don't think that's what you want. Like saying no in terms of not because he doesn't want to, but just because I don't think that's a good idea. But then I realized Alex is never not going to say yes to Maggie asking him Mm -hmm. to be, uh, her boyfriend uh-huh. so i and i just love that like i think i want audiences to find like great comfort in alex like just the ultimate person who for better or for worse is always going to be there right it, so it wasn't like it took two and a half years for your girlfriend in college to finally say yes she'll be your <laughs> no 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 <laughs> i didn't i didn't i wanted to sh- i wanted to show with the montage uh that happens before the two and a half years that like uh, maybe it's a little simplistic, but Alex making his bed and Alex working out and like not just giving her space, but like you need to take care of yourself before taking you care of yourself. Yeah. yeah. And like that's so his arc is like before really being there for someone else, you got to make it, make your bed. If you mm-hmm. will. You got to make your bed. <laughs> yeah. Take, like take responsibility and sure, um, your parents be very proud to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so how, how talk about your crew. I mean, I mean, crew size, how many days did you guys shoot? We shot 17 days and the crew size was super tiny. We didn't get, we didn't have a lot of permits, so we had to keep it really small. And yeah. I mean, I think it was probably 10 people total on set always, including and, actors. And the locations where, where'd you guys shoot and how did you get everything? We did four days in Santa Barbara at this boarding school called Kate, where my sister went to boarding school and they were really nice and gave us a great deal. Um, and then 
Occidental, my co- the college that I went to, we asked them to film there and they said, $15,000 a day, please. And I said, I was like, that's my budget, actually. Well, how nice of them to give you such a great break on the place. You're 15 grand. God. Yeah. And you were a student there. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So now talk about, uh, let's talk. So you, you, this won the jury award in South by, right? Yes. Yeah. So how, how has that affected the trajectory of the film? Uh, in every way. I, it's, uh, it's, I think it's the reason why IFC bought it. Like they have a history of buying uh, South by Southwest winners. And um, also with COVID, it was just a hard time for movies to get bought. And I think winning that award was like super helpful in um, shit house getting bought. The other thing that's happened is as soon as we won, I felt this wall going up that I put there. Cause I just, I, the process of making it was so difficult that I, like, I, f- I feel this desire to tell people how much it was made for. Like, it's a miracle that it's watchable. Don't watch it with the lens of, okay, what's this South by Southwest winner all about? Cause I think that's how people are. A lot of people are, are going to watch it. And um, that sucks. And I don't want people to watch it that way. Mm-hmm. So that's the biggest thing for me internally. Like uh, that's the, the thing I so was that, like, just, it, it puts you in a, a state of mind where you think people are thinking, Oh, this must be like, you know, the next, like whatever, or, or super well, high, high end and like, uh, you know, gorgeous looking effects, blah, 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 blah. Is that what well, you're saying? Or, or Well, not even like, I don't even know what they're going to expect, but they're going to there. I think a lot of people, I know I do when I see some, that's something one, like, I go in with super kind of, high expectations, not or? high expectations, but just like, all right. Like I, I, I think it's cause I don't like awards and I think a lot of people secretly don't yeah. like awards unless they're getting them. So they like co- go in like, all right, let me see what, what, why you won your award. And I don't right. want people to go in with that mindset. I want people to just like fall. But at the same time, it's the reason why a lot of people are seeing it. So I, mm-hmm. I can't, you can't have both, but um, I mean, I would say you're probably thinking maybe too much like as somebody who's in the industry. Hopefully, yes. you're, hopefully your audience doesn't really have that right, right. sensibility. You know what I mean? They see I that. So. Oh, that must be a good movie, and that's it. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like uh, it can get snarky inside the industry. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so where? So what next? What? What's? What's? What are the next plans with it? Are you guys still doing festivals, or is it just being released, or what's? What's up? It's next? released today. It just. It's coming. Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah, it's out on VOD today, and it's in like thirty theaters too around the country. Is it? So, yeah. So not in LA where I am, so I I can't see it in a theater today, which stinks. But it is out today, and I can you can watch it on like a Voodoo and all those things. Cool and. Any, I know IFC has been doing a lot of drive-ins. Is it in the drive-ins at all? Well, I, there was a drive-in premiere five days ago, but I don't think there are any drive-ins in LA. Actually, it's weird. There's not, the 30 theaters are all, I think, indoor theater, except in New York, there's one drive-in. Um, but like all the places like Texas, like they're, they're opening their theaters back up. So, uh, yeah. So no plans to go down to Texas to go see it? I actually do. Yeah, I'm going to Dallas. No, for because I'm I'm from Dallas, so I'm going <laughs> next week uh, to do like this Q and A at a Dallas theater. Oh, cool. Yeah. Be careful. I, <laughs> I yeah, I'll need some luck for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, you'll be fine. Um, well, cool. On behalf of SAG <laughs> After Foundation, we want to thank you for joining us and sharing your experiences, process, and craft with your fellow artists. Thank so, you so much.